the convergent design is arguably the most well-known and the most widely applied uh, variation of mixed methods research. In this video I will talk about what it is and when to choose it, a little bit about philosophical assumptions and then about the procedures for applying this design. I'm Jarek and the aim of this channel is to help you develop and conduct research that will make an impact. I post weekly videos about research design, data collection and analysis, as well as interviews with research professionals. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So what is a convergent design? A convergent mixed methods design is the one in which the researcher collects both qualitative and quantitative data at the same time for the purpose of comparing these results, contrasting them and triangulating them. So for this reason, uh, this design is also called a convergent parallel design. So when should you consider choosing this design? There are several situations in which you may want to choose the convergent parallel design for your study. So for example, if your time for collecting qualitative and quantitative uh, data is limited. Also, if you believe there is equal value in both qualitative and quantitative data for the topic you're investigating and for the research questions you're trying to answer. And then uh, lastly, of course, if you feel you have strengths in both qualitative and quantitative research and you feel you're confident that you can manage such a big data set. Since the convergent design involves collecting and analyzing both qualitative and quantitative data, you may be wondering what kind of philosophical assumptions would fit this design. And I believe that rather than trying to mix a number of different philosophical assumptions into your study, you should choose a more inclusive uh, philosophical worldview such as pragmatism. You may want to read more about pragmatism, but to just give you a very brief summary, this worldview assumes adopting what works for you in a given situation. And I believe that it really suits this situation when we are mixing uh, these two completely different uh, qualitative and quantitative designs. The research procedures in the convergent design are relatively straightforward. So you start with collecting both qualitative and quantitative data at the same time. In the next step you start to analyze qualitative and quantitative data independently. So this is important that you do these two data sets separately. In the next step you start comparing these two data sets. So sometimes you may want to merge them or simply compare uh, the two data sets, as I said, the two uh, results of the two lines of analysis. And finally, you start interpreting these results. So you're looking at similarities and differences and generally at the whole, you're trying to get the whole picture of the situation you're researching uh, by means of these two data sets. As you can see, the procedures and the design itself is relatively straightforward. Remember, however, that this does not mean it's an easy task to adopt this design in your study. Unless you're working in a team where you have different people responsible for the different data sets, so you have qualitative and quantitative experts, it may be really challenging to do it on your own, because you really need to be an expert in both qualitative and quantitative data collection and analysis. Of course, the, re uh, the reward is that you're gaining a very in-depth insight into your data, you're utilizing the strengths of both qualitative and qualitative and quantitative research, uh, and finally, it's an extremely efficient design because you're doing uh, data collection and analysis of uh, qualitative and quantitative data at the same time. 